Hi everyone, it's Paul Tilly and welcome back. Today I wanted to take a look at this concept of calculating yield to maturity. Now yield to maturity, just in terms of, what does that mean? Essentially what it is, is the rate of return or the interest rate, the effective interest rate that you will get on a bond when you buy it. Now, yield maturity is sometimes known and other times we have to work it out. Uh, on what basis is it known? Well, if you, for example, were to go and buy a bond, buy a bond and keep it through to its maturity, so let's assume you're buying a, a bond for a thousand dollar bond, you're going to keep it for its maturity keep it for two years, at the end of the two years you get the thousand dollars. That bond will have a coupon rate on it. We've already looked at coupon rate. Coupon rate is the state of rate of interest on the bond. You will know, let's say for example, that the interest rate is 10%. Okay, so I'll just draw a little bond here. It's a thousand dollar you bond, 10%. We know that the interest that you will get on that bond will be fifty dollars per half year because again um, interest payments on bonds are made twice a year so ten percent would be five percent on a half year so five percent of a thousand dollars would be fifty so the yield of maturity if you keep the bond is exactly the coupon rate no problem there the challenge comes and the only real mathematics of it come in is when we say, okay, let's say we have bond for a term, the, the term on the bond, and we sell it right here. Now we've already looked at valuing bonds, and really the whole bond valuation process deals with what if we sell it between the dates. So the question is then, when we sell it, we're selling it either at a discount or we're selling it at a, a premium. The question is then, what is the effective rate of return for the person who buys it to the end? And that's really what we're looking at here is recalculating the yield of maturity. And essentially, we're estimating it. So yield of maturity um, needs to be calculated. And we know when we do this, let's say, for example, you go and your bond, instead of uh, it's a, and again, I'll redraw it here. It's a thousand dollar future value. In other words, at the end of the bond process, you're going to get a thousand dollars. It's a ten percent coupon. Let's assume that you end up selling it for um, nine hundred and seventy-two dollars. Okay. Essentially, then, what we're saying there is that you can sell it for nine seventy-two it pays 10%. So essentially what we're what we're looking at here is we're selling it at a discount meaning that market rate of interest is greater than what the bonds paying. So in order to compensate for that, uh, you need to sell it at some sort of a discount. So that that difference between the 1972 that uh, $28 difference is kind of the extra little bit of money that people would need in order to make up for the difference between what the market rate is, what they can get out there somewhere else, and what the rate the interest on the bond is paying. So essentially then, if you sell that for 972, someone's going to ask, well, what's the percentage rate that I'm going to get from the time I buy it to the end when I get this thousand dollars? And how do we do that? Well, in order to calculate that, we know, for example, from our from our experience that the bond price is a function of the present value of the interest payments on the bond. So this particular bond here, for example, I've done, it pays $50 every half year. So you know, it's a $50 and a $50 and a $50 and a $50. What we want to be able to do is bring that back to say, what is the present value of that stream of money? That's what we need to do in this part. So the bond price incorporates that stream of money, plus it incorporates 
the $1,000. And what we're really trying to do is say, okay, that $1,000 is going to come into our hands in a couple or three or four years. So what is its present value now? So we need to be able to calculate the present value of the uh, maturity value of the bond. So the bond matures, got to pay $1,000. We want to know, well, what's that worth now? So if we draw two of these things back, that will give us the bond price. So this and this will give us the bond price. Now, in this particular scenario here, where, we, where we're looking at yield and maturity, we know the bond price. You know, it's, say, $972 for what we're selling it. Uh, we know so many other things, too. We know, for example, what the coupon rate is. We know what the market rate is. You know, what is the market paying? Really, the only thing that we're, we don't know is the I value, the interest. So if you look at the basic formula then for this, I'll write it out in formula terms, what we have is the bond price equals, and the present value of the interest payments then is the, um, the uh, if the, which is the future value of the bond payments, times uh, 1 minus plus i to the minus n over i. So that's, that's there. That's this part right here. Plus, and here we have to get the present value of the um, $1,000. So that's if the So that's that one there. So essentially what we have is all this information here except for I. So we can plug in all the information, we can solve for I. What we need to do is we need to plug in numbers for I. We're going to estimate I. So we're going to say, you know, 3%, 4%, whatever. And the idea is if we plug in an estimated number here, we know that when that estimated number gives a, a total here that equals the bond price, which in this case was 972, that is the effective yield to maturity. So we plug in an estimate of I, and how can you estimate I? You're going to say, well, you know, gee, that could be any number from here to the sun. Well, it's not really. We know, for example, that the interest rate on the coupon was 10%. We also know that it sold for 972, so we have an idea that the interest rate out there in the world in the market is a little above 10%, just a little, maybe 11%. So we can plug in 11 here. We know it's nowhere below 10, so it's, it's not that much higher than 10 because it's only, only $28 off. So we can plug in, so we could try, say, 11%, we could try 12%. And we'll narrow it down based on that. So that's that's the idea behind this estimation of yield maturity, is you estimate the I, and that will give us the effect of yield to maturity. The process is not that much different, but it does require, when you do this manual, it requires an estimation process. And again, the idea of putting a value in I is to make this side equal the bond price that we know. And when we know the, when those two equal, we know our I, and that will give us our effective rate of return. Now, keep in mind the I is the half year value, so it's 2I would give you the annual rate. Keep in mind, say, for example, when we do this, this is the half because it's a semi annual payment. So the 2I will give us the effective yield to maturity. Okay, so that's how you do those. Thanks for watching.